my garden. Um, Scott had vacation last week and we went to go visit some friends in Virginia and then coming back this week um, just random things have kept me busy and occupied. Um, I've been um, diligent enough to keep watering um, so I'm gonna come out here and kind of get a progress report on how things are going and do some maintenance. All right, so I'm in the barn and I'll tell you one of the hardest things that I did not anticipate about gardening and farming and it's so funny, like I use the word farming very loosely because we're so new at this, but um, it's keeping everything tidy and clean and, and not getting lazy. And so um, I'm gonna kind of come in here and tidy up before I do anything outside. Um, and in a lot of the books I read and videos I watch, I don't even know where to look for the camera, videos I watch, everyone says about keeping your tools clean because you can spread disease and all of that. So that was my big thing today is I wanted to get down a system to keep my tools clean. So I, um, what I had on hand, so hydrogen peroxide, I put in a spray bottle um, and a dry brush. I didn't have one of the fancy dry brushes. So this is an old scrubby brush that I don't use. They call for steel wool. Don't have steel wool, but I've got this Brillo pad, not Brillo pad, whatever this is, but it's close enough. Um, so I'm, I've got brought that out. I'm going to clean my tools. I know I need to go back and trim and hedge. Um, we got some mulch last week. Um, and so I'm going to start mulching some of the beds to try to help with moisture and weeds and um, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm gonna work on now is trying to get all my ducks in order before I actually go out and visit my garden. All right, bye. So this is what um, I'm starting with. Um, so it's kind of a hot mess. Um, I Nanny, that is not a grandchild. Everybody assumes I have a grandbaby. I do not have a grandbaby. He's the closest thing to a grandbaby. Uh, but I nanny a sweet little boy named Benjamin. So, um, but yeah, so this is the hot mess that I'm gonna try to get through. There's my tools that I need to clean up and uh, you'll see the after. I don't know if y'all can see, but this is the beginning of the season where all of these tiny little cobwebs appear everywhere. And I have been nailed within the last 10 minutes, no fewer than <clears throat> 60 times. This is so annoying, but it is a reality. This is as good as it's gonna get right now. Um, it's getting hot. I need to get this done. One of the unfortunate evils of um, doing stuff outdoors, gardening, whatever, um, is uh, you deal with the, the critters that are in the actual environment Oh my gosh, it's so hot still. It's so humid. Um, and right now we're dealing with mice and spiderwebs and toads. Toads poo is like that big, that long, like that fat. It's disgusting. Um, and so cleaning up, the hardest part is the cobwebs and the poo and the beetles and the spiders. And it really does get slightly cringy. But um, again, it's one of the necessary evils.
right, so I got a clean towel and um, got these clean for the most part. <laughs> it's as good as it's gonna get. I uh, cleaned out my bucket. So now the goal is to keep up with this. Um, so I'm gonna dry these off and then go out to go look at the garden. So it's been a week since Scott's vacation um, and uh, he and Cheyenne helped me tremendously um, to dig holes and plant and and I <clears throat> hope that that video can express why I really went out on a limb with this no dig garden. That ground is so hard as you saw but uh, here we've got our lavender, I'm sorry, this is our lavender, this is our rosemary. Um, here's the buckwheat. Um, Cheyenne cleaned out the chicken coop and uh, chickens have been out here. So, um, but yeah, so here's the buckwheat. The clover is doing, oh, I'm in the shade. The clover is doing really, really good. I'm going to see if I can actually walk out here. Um, this is the Napa cabbage. I only see two plants, sorry. So, pulled a couple of weeds, trying to stay on top of stuff like this. But the borage is pretty. I think next time I should have probably scattered them rather than placed them. There's the clover. Um, this is, God, you should think I would remember. Oh, this is my rutabaga. So, very excited there. Um, I don't want to squash any plants. I've got some carrots coming up. I think I only have two of the Napa cabbages. Maybe we'll have some more spring up. I'm going to hold off on planting my Brussels sprouts till it cools off. Here's my watermelon patch. We've pulled a ton of watermelons off. We've got, looks like one left here. My beans are doing well. This one is the one that I sowed um, a second sowing because the seeds didn't pop up and we had a big rain and I found my seeds out of the dirt kind of rolled around in random places. So I tried to replant those. This looks beautiful. This is what they're all supposed to look like about now. It's got a real pretty, it's going to be the purple, the purple bean. And I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this t-shirt, but I've had to cut and toss a couple of my cantaloupes because they kind of got rotted. I don't know if it's the t-shirt's just keeping in too much moisture. Um, but since the last time I shot, I think I pulled two cantaloupes. Um, got my watermelons kind of trying to trim them down because they're kind of going wild. And I really should have taken a picture of my okra. There's my borage. It's doing well. My jalapenos. I'm hoping to maybe candy some of those. I've got my yellow bells. Yellow bells. I don't know if that's a good bug or a bad bug. I gotta look it up. But so here's my okra plant and I'll show you a picture. But it was actually laying down on the ground because I, I let it, I ignored it for too long. And the okra got so heavy, top heavy, it was laying on the ground. And then I cut all the large okra off. And here it is, nice and perky. But like you can see where I cut there and there and there and there and there. I mean, there was a ton of big, like one foot long okra. And it just got top heavy. So I have one beet coming through and the rest of this looks good just trying to keep it weeded and uh yeah slow progress but we had it in the 80s high 80s for a while and now it's back up to the low 90s so um i think that kind of affected how things are growing oh there's a ladybug i don't know if you can see her that's a good pest love them all right Some basil, cantaloupe, Ooh. big one, there's the rag, oh, look, <laughs> that's 
too big. Um, too big. Too big. I mean, these are all so big. I also wanted to follow. I wanted to follow up on um, my cleanness, <laughs> and so I've got my clean bucket, and I just trimmed a bunch of veggies. I'm gonna go and try to prune my apple trees because they're kind of bunchy. So I'm doing this one-handed because I don't have my tripod, but squirting these down with hydrogen peroxide, and then I will dry it on my apron. Here we go. Sanitized. So there's the carnage and I'm hoping that's good. So the idea is apple trees, see how that one's super compact. You don't get a lot of airflow. You can breed a lot of disease and pests and rot and fruit and all that. So the key from what I'm learning is you need almost like a goblet shaped um, this looks more like a flute, um, shaped pattern and you want them to grow that way. And then if you have splits like here, you want to get rid of the weak link. So like it doesn't break in a windstorm. So I cut off a big pattern there and <clears throat> these nodes right here are buds where another branch will grow out. And so I cut at an angle, hopefully also just so it would come out that way. Same thing here. This will be a branch. Um, so trying to cut everything on an angle so it grows out rather than inside each other. And hopefully we can form kind of like a goblet or a bowl or a flute shape. So on this one, I've got one growing down there. I'm gonna get rid of that <clears throat> and when you cut or prune trees, it does shock them, but it also directs more of the energy into the areas that you want to produce. So I am gonna trim this one up a little bit as well and try to direct the growth. All right, so it's a lot more skimpy, but it will give it a better chance hopefully of fruiting. I'm anticipating next year having a really nice apple crop. So this is one of the first apple trees I planted and you can kind of see last year I pruned this one quite a bit um, but it doesn't quite look like a wine glass. It's a little lopsided so I'm going to trim this one as well and get rid of that little straggler down there. It looks so pitiful. <laughs> But there it is, it's like a bad haircut, I know. I'm hoping that I can get branches to go this way. Um, these might cross, so I'm not sure how that's, see how this one will probably grow this way and this one will grow that way. You don't want them to cross either, so. Anyways, we'll see, hopefully this is forgiving. So this one is all kinds of wrong, so. We'll see what I can do on this one. I literally just left those so I knew this was alive. That one's pretty sad. All right, here's number five. Yep. All right, there she is. All right, so I don't know if you can see all these beautiful yellow flowers. These are, are wildflowers that make me super happy and give Scott major anxiety. But these flowers benefit my honey flow. Yummy. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, I 
wanted to kind of share a little bit about what I'm doing with some of the stuff that I got yesterday. Um, so we had, I had picked all that really big okra, um, which can be super tough. And I decided to, um, let me see if you can see that. So I cut it up and I'm going to make like a stew um, out of it. Um, and I've got like a recipe. I love Pinterest. So I've got my little recipe here. Um, so I'm gonna try doing this, this stew um, with okra uh, for tomorrow. I'm gonna make it tonight and then do it tomorrow. And then I started my bread. Um, so I should flip the camera. Let me do that. <clears throat> so this is my leaven for my loaf of bread that I will bake tonight. It has to sit here for about six hours. This is my sourdough starter. Um, I have been working with a dry sourdough as opposed to a wet sourdough. I'm not sure I know which I like better. So I did a big batch of this because with my stew tomorrow, I'm hoping to make focaccia. This was one of our cantaloupes. That's half of it that I actually decided not to cut because of this area right here. It was just kind of it took up half of this half, um, so I just, I was too lazy to salvage it, but so here's the cantaloupe, it's super sweet, delicious, the other half, and then this is the basil, I picked the leaves off of it, and I think, <clears throat> because I'm, I've got a busy day today, and a busy day tomorrow, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try doing um, an infused oil um, with basil. I'm going to do like a an olive oil, a basil infused olive oil. I'm going to try doing that today and sticking it in my pantry 